I only recently got her to take off three of her four masks. Yeah. So I, I I'm going around the the house and town wearing um, three to four, depending on where I, I am. Now I learned in health class that you should never wear more than one because the friction can cause breakage. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. I am St. Teresa of Avila. St. Teresa of Avila. There's a lot of St. Teresa's, isn't I there? I think so, yeah. Popular name. Yeah. One of those names that you choose after you join the clergy. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And this here is Frank wearing our favorite shirt from the Billy Graham Museum, which is unfortunately closed until spring because of COVID. Yeah. Or do we are we allowed to say those hot words or they're not even saying it i think they said renovations but <laughs> renovations um and it's guess what the cov is all around yeah it is it's um capricovid season it's what <laughs> capricovid season like capricorn yeah it is capricorn season and we have bad news guys our entire house has it not entire and not entire there's two people in a house of seven that have remained three maybe three maybe but we're tested three people two of them you're saying frank doesn't count <laughs> coincidence i think not well you didn't say what the coincidence is we have our booster yeah we have our boosters if there's if, if you ever needed a small very the smallest sample size of whether or not you should get your booster or not everyone in this house has been vaccinated right um twice Double, right. double, doses double dose of, of, of um, um, always Moderna, right? Always Moderna yeah. in this house. And only three of the people out of the seven got the booster when the booster time came. And those three people, coincidentally, are not um, suffering with the Omicron. Right. So, hey, I'm not going to tell anyone what to do. But what I'm going to say is um, get the booster. <laughs> But here's my thing, because we're a Christian podcast. Yes. And and I've heard different people say, oh, they, there, there's something about the va- valuing religion, mm-hmm. but then under using it to undermine science. Oh. And um, just, you know, quick little, little PSA, my personal PSA is the Lord gave us the brains we have and, and the the cooperation that humans share to be able to help each other. Right. And so to say something like, don't worry, I got God on my side, Mm -hmm. is doing a disservice to yourself because you do. And God is what gave us the ability and the connection and the life that we're able to protect ourselves and protect each other. And so um, personally, my personal thought, is get the booster and then thank God that you were able, you know, a lot of places in the world you're not able. And so be appreciative, have gratitude. Thank obviously all of the medical professionals and stuff who are making it possible. And and thank, thank God that you have access to it. That's, yeah. my, that's my personal, that's my little spiel. My, my beginning yeah, because of the Because the scientist spiel. is a child of God. The scientist is using his God given gift yes. to, um, further research and um, make these these inventions and these these um, scientific uh, breakthroughs su- supports. Yes, and so you don't want to be the man in the rowboat of refusing, refusing the man in the water. Help. Man in the water refusing the rowboat. Refusing the rowboat. Refusing the boat. Refusing mm-hmm. the helicopter. Don't worry, God's coming to save me. God sent those things. Yes, but that's just a little PSA on a Thursday. Why not? Why not? I can say it. So his shirt is John three sixteen. Yes. Um. Maybe it's hard to see because of the microphone. Probably, it says the Billy Graham Library, even though it's a museum. But um, well, Charlotte, books. Charlotte, Charlotte, North Carolina. John three sixteen is for I for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believe in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. It's extremely famous. One of the most famous. Yeah, and yet every time I see it, I have to, <laughs> I have to Google it. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, oh, of course, John three sixteen, and then that verse. Oh, of course, that verse. Right. But on the spot, being told the connection. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm always like, ah, I'm pretty sure it's something about Jesus. <laughs> yeah. But in the New Testament, you're usually right if you make that guess. Right. So I just want to know if 
Steph Curry is going to be the MVP. Do you really want to know that? Yeah, <laughs> I do. Um. Well, first uh, of all, do you know who? Do you know who the top four contenders are? Okay, top four contenders. I'm gonna say Steph Curry. Very good. <laughs> is it Giannis Antetokounmpo? If it's spelled Giannis, yes. yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think LeBron's been playing that great this year, and he also never wins MVP anymore. So I'm not gonna say him. Mm, Kevin Durant. Yep. Okay. And you're missing a Luka Doncic. Uh, not Luka Doncic, a Denver Nugget, a six ten Denver Nugget, Serbian. Oh, um, um, don't tell me. I, I I see his face. Oh my! Give me the first letter. J. J. Oh, the Joker. Your your uh, Jorkic. Okay, I wondered how to say it. It's J O K I C. Yeah. Jokic. Jokic. Nic- Nikola Jokic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They call him the Joker. Okay. So okay, you, I was close. You got them though. I got the three, and then I went for the one European. I gave, I said the wrong European. But you also name dropped two other NBA stars. I think you might know sports. <laughs> hey guys, I know. Yeah, is this a sports podcast? Yeah, why not? I don't know. I don't really know anything about sports. When I was doing the uh, sleep study, mm-hmm. um, there was a young lady who was um the assistant um yeah. sleep study lady, and where we were similar ages. So I don't even know. Why I'm saying, keep saying lady, <laughs> but. She would always have to get me at the, at the beginning of the hospital and we walk through and just have small talk that normal guy and girl, twenty early 20-year-olds 20 have. Mm-hmm. The last time I went, she starts talking about fantasy football. Oh, no. And the, she was like, oh, you, you, you do fantasy football, right? And I'm like, I used to. Oh, I like, never once in my life did I do fantasy football. And then she was like... Oh, yeah. So I was like really debating whether to put in this guy. Or and she's like giving me names. I'm like, oh, yeah. She's Those like, guys. What would you have done? I'm like, uh, you know what I would have done? I would have probably done exactly what you did. And why'd you do what you're doing again? And Listen, it, was showing, uh, it was. You're being humble. You knew the NBA. I knew. I I know well, the way I like to put it is, I know enough to get myself through social situations. I think that's how my dad was. Yeah. Like mm. no, I can talk to anyone, and they'll think I I know sports. Right. But what I'm doing, it's really a um. Like a psychology move. It's really like a cheat sheet. <laughs> no, it's, it's like a cheat sheet, but it's also like, I think when you're when you're a semi sports fan, yeah, you learn quickly that sports fans care a lot and they will love to give their own opinions. Yeah. So you can easily that's yeah reverse the conversation on them so and have, have a, a full blown out sports conversation without them ever realizing that you it, didn't know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's like you just keep throwing it back to them and. You know enough, and then you can put who. So if if someone was like, oh, "Who do you think's gonna be the MVP this year?" I would say, "Oh, well, I mean, like Steph Curry broke the all time three point." Has to all, be, all the, and yeah. Then I I knew that key fact, and then they'd go back and say, "Ah, oh, but come on, the Joker and yeah. Denver." And I'm like, yeah. Oh, "Yeah, well, that's that's true." Yeah, and it you're it giving works. away all your secrets. You guys can have my secrets. Go out and what I would do is just learn enough sports like the headlines you know there's a as a i think we talked about this there's a portlandia episode where um where fred does it it's not with sports but it's just with like, uh, like world headlines yes yeah, yeah. he's like the smartest guy at the party yeah and they're like how do you do that and, and he's was, like you just need to know a little bit yeah <laughs> <laughs> way to bring it back yeah yeah he literally just like learned one topic yeah and then he was able to transition right. the, yeah so you can really do it in anything Oh, right. Do you think he will be MVP? Steph Curry? Mm-hmm. Yes. I, I think no matter what else happens in the season with the other players, mm-hmm. Steph's playing at a great level. But just this when you break the all-time ever in the NBA, mm-hmm. most three points ever, you kind of, like you, how does another player have a great season, but then like you get past that fact? Right. So it's like unless he completely just – is airballing everything from now on. It's he's given himself a accolade in the middle of the season, right? That nobody else can touch because it took him, first of all, being the best shooter ever, and also the amount of years he's been in the NBA. So, you know, it, it, this is the MVP is based on during the season. So it's nothing like, oh, but they won, they won the championship. Right. This is all just like in the season play, and it doesn't get much better than. 
than breaking an, uh, an all time record. Yeah. Um, I heard that they, they, the, the, the crowd chants MVP in every st- city he goes to. Yeah. So like, well, you co- should, when he broke, sorry to cut you no, off. That's, you know, that's when it. he broke the all time three record, it was in Madison square garden when they were playing the Knicks. Okay. So he plays for California. He plays for the <laughs> golden state warriors. Okay. Well, yeah. Which is in California. Right. But so he's all the way on the other coast playing at someone and else's stadium. So he goes to the Knicks who are a notoriously terrible team. And, um, it w- it was as if it was a home stadium of people cheering because it's like it sort of um is bigger than just your hometown. It's not like nobody's cheering for the Golden State Warriors, right? If they're not from Golden State, right, right. But you're cheering for Steph Curry the same way. Yeah, you know, I mean, a lot of people hate. Actually, I was listening to people talk, and they were like, well, "Um, the thing about Steph Curry is he's so likable. Mm. Like you know, LeBron James is so great, but." You are always caught in 50-50 of people who love him, people who hate him. Yeah. Sort of like that. I mean, Tom Brady's even less than 50-50 where it's like, you know, he's great. But if he comes and plays the Eagles, I don't like Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. I feel like Steph Curry, something about him is just so likable. Yeah. It's like, and um, so they were saying like, that's one of those things where everyone's right. rooting for him. Um, Everyone is rooting for Steph Curry. I was thinking of something when you were. You said he broke a record. I heard that is it Embiid or just not I don't know if broke or tied with Allen Iverson for some kind of record with Philadelphia, which is just more local than Yeah, makes NBA. sense. All right. But so, uh, they're all they're all Christians. Curry, Durant, Anticook, Anupanope, and Jokic. <laughs> <laughs> How do you say it? Jokic, Jokic, Yo No, the uh, Anti Oh, uh, Giannis. No, literally it's it's nobody knows how to say it, okay. but I think it's Antante te kumpo. What right. is he? He's Greek. Oh, that's right. He is Greek. They call him, they call <laughs> him the Greek freak. I'm looking right at it. He's Greek Orthodox, uh, Christian. Nikola Jokic is Serbian yo, Orthodox. Jocic. Yo, Jocic. Yo, 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 yo. I don't know how to say it. Is a Serbian um, Orthodox. Kevin and Steph are, I guess, American Christian. But um, Steph is extremely Christian. Did you know that? No. Yeah, he's he's. Ex- they all are pretty, um, ext- very involved with their churches. Very. As a matter of fact, Kevin Durant. I've read. I don't know if it if it is a current current uh, statement, but it says he goes to chapel before every game. Oh, really? But um, Steph Curry was brought up very spiritual, um, and not just spiritual, religious church. And um, so that's it, how he makes all those threes. He has God in his side. He said it's definitely he treats he brings God to the court as to life. And mm-hmm. um, it's really interesting. If you just if you just Google Steph Curry spirituality, you'll have lots of fun articles to read. Um, I have a covid house, so I couldn't even get close to the printer. So I don't <laughs> have anything printed like the that. Covid printer. Yeah. But um, he even said that he chose Christianity. He was brought up very Christian. Um, but I think eighth grade, a, a pastor said to him, you know, you are, you are this religion because your parents made you this religion. Mm. And so then he said, no, I, I want to choose it. Yeah. And he like had his own confirmation. Yeah. You know, in Catholicism, the sacrament of confirmation, which happens a little early, if you ask me. I know. Fifth grade. It's like you, you, you have your parents drive you yeah. and sign you up and take you to, for yourself confirm. But it's the idea that baptism was your parents inducting you into right. the church and confirmation confirmation is you're confirming your faith right to the church well i think reconciliation is a little young as well you have to make stuff up <sighs> yeah yeah to say i think I, I i think what well, that's third how old are you in third grade um it must be if six is, is is five six seven eight nine yeah i don't know not even not even eight i think i think seven eight because you're third. small that's before communion and communion is you're I think pretty, you're like seven you're pretty young yeah but yeah I, I didn't i didn't do any sins worth i probably did no i didn't At seven isn't isn't like the whole point is like jesus says that children are i know like, be like children and also like um in confirmation you pick a name you do and um i would i so not only would i like the confirmation pushed back because you want to be older when you reaffirm your faith but i would love if you could literally repick your name like your first name? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what all the the actual right, like uh, that's what that's what happens when the all the Saint Teresas. Right. Yeah. Do you just not like your name? 
<laughs> is no, that where this is coming you could, from? You could repick the same one. But I guess there'd be too much family pressure for you to actually change because people would be offended. Yeah. And like the other thing about that is what's the age that you would accurately pick a better name for yourself? Because yeah. I think even if I had that choice at 16 and I changed my name. Well, I mean, that's why you're afraid of tattoos. So we can't really use you as a... Um, I like the way God made me. Can't use you. Um, yeah. So the saint, like St. Teresa... Not saying and tattoos aren't good. Whoever the saint was the other day we talked about... Because in the old days, um, nuns and I guess priests, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know about the old, I don't know about priests really, but I know nuns had to completely get rid of their name because I have an aunt who's a nun and she was, um, her name was Marie McDonald Mm -hmm. and that's gone. When you become a nun, she became Sister Mary Suzanne or Suzanne Mary. I think Mary Suzanne. We called her Sister Suzanne my whole life, but I think like in the nineties or eighties, they were like, no, like, let's just give them back their names. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. So now she became again, Sister Marie McDonald. Oh, that's funny. But like when I was in school, we had Sister Ann Edward and Sister Vincent and Sister Thomas. And that was not their, their I was a baby birth name. given yeah. name. Mm-hmm. But anyway. Anyhow. Walk through. Thursday. <laughs> Guys, it is Thursday. I don't even know if we said that yet. I don't even know if we said what day it is. No, it's December 30th. Oh, yeah, well, law. It's December 30th. December 30th. I, it's this this is void in time between Christmas and New Year's Eve. People are getting COVID. We're talking about NBA. It's like nobody knows what's going to happen. No. But we do know one thing. That's on Thursday. We have a little something called Walk Through Thursday. So play the music. Let's go to the intro. What do you normally say? Let's dance. Let's dance. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cuz walk through Wednesday just begun. And we're back, guys. It is walk through Thursday, my favorite time of the year. And what we do on walk through Thursdays, we open up the Bible that we got from the Billy Graham Library. And we pick a verse. We always pick a verse. And when we get that verse that we picked, we walk through it, hence the name. And we try to find some deeper meaning in the words. Instead of just doing a long, drawn-out mantra, which is great, we sometimes call that a prayer, we want to understand more of it and maybe get something out of it. Because the Bible is a living word. The word is a living word, foreshadowing. And <laughs> and we, we, you know, we take away what we need at this moment. And maybe you'll take something different away, and that's okay. Nobody will fault you for that because it went, what is it, from... from from my mouth to God's ears. Oh, yeah. Maybe the opposite. From God's mouth to your ears. From God's hand to your heart. However you want to go about saying it. So today, we are going paperless because someone's afraid to go near the printer. <laughs> Understandably. I only recently got her to take off three of her four masks. Yeah. I so I, I'm going around the, the house and town wearing um, three to four, depending on where I, I am. Now, I learned in health class that you should never wear more than one because the friction can cause breakage i throw them out pretty frequently <laughs> and as you can see i even have professional buttons on my headpiece because so they're pulling your ears pulling off. my ears off i ever see that the ear fighting games they do in like asia put like a, a rope like a little string Spencer, i don't want to hear that okay. especially not on walk through so guys we are reading from john john one does it get any this is john three is late in john john one this that's the beginning of the story yeah and, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all, all wrote about Jesus from start to finish. Right. So here we go. New International Version, straight at Bible Gateway, off the phone. We wouldn't want to get it from anywhere else. <laughs> so, <laughs> so a little title of it, The Word Becomes Flesh. Did I say we're reading John 1 through 5? Or uh, did I just say John? You, you just said John. We're reading you, John said, you said John 1. We're reading John 1 to 5. Put it there. All right. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Bible, you did it again. (laughs) Straight bangers all around. Thank you, Bible. So, um... When I when I hear you reading, I was hearing the Catholic Mass um, because because of the words, and I'm guessing it's where it came from. Through him, with him, in him, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor to you, almighty father forever and ever. Um, so it sounds like the, the Trinity talk or where, where Catholics got Trinity talk. Yes. Because it's, it's, um, it's a link, differentiating there just to say that John one, uh, John's going around town and he's, you know, the British are coming. <laughs> he's saying the Messiah is coming. Paul the Messiah Revere. is coming. He's baptizing people. And the authorities are saying, uh, are you the Messiah? Are you God? Or what's going on? We're, you know, um, or, is, or are you purporting to be? And so yes. what you're reading is John's statement to them. Yes. That how could I be? So let's just walk through it. Mm-hmm. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. That was a long bit. You might have thought I was going to cut it off earlier, but I want to talk about that specifically. Okay. Because I like it. Okay. Because it's kind of, in a way, what Walk Through Thursday is and I'll foreshadowing. So in the beginning was the word. And so what is the word? Uh, Thunderbird. What's the word, Thunderbird? <laughs> the word is God. The word is God. <clears throat> and and God's words. And it, it's like, that's sort of what the redundancy is here. And I'll try to maybe explain it hereafter and the word so the word is with god and so you know the like almost like what god like the law is god created like of the world it's like the word in you know inseparable yeah the the, the bible and god and the word was god and the, the reason why i like this is because we always say the bible is a living word right and this sort of goes to that right like we the reason we differentiate differentiate <laughs> oh like walk through thursday is about slowing it down getting a, a deeper meaning that's sort of the word is the word is with god right and so it's like you can get what he's saying to you right and then with and the word was god is combined in them you always say anytime something happens you say the 23rd psalm right just for like you're not even thinking about Okay, I'm walking through a valley. It's just, yeah. it's, you do do the mantra, which right. we always say today is not about the mantra, but it's... The words are healing. The words mm-hmm. itself are God or with, you know, and so there's a power in it. Yes. So I think that's what it's saying when it's saying the word is with God and the word was God. It's like the words, what they're saying are with God mm-hmm. and, and you know you can follow them. You know when you're when you're reading the Bible, you can follow it because it's with God. Right. And then... The comfort of, of daily prayers and and just reading a, a, a verse is is because you're you're getting that it's it's a, it's a, we had an energy podcast right. it's that it's a healing energy of God right just being that the word is God right the words themselves yes light your life light the world you know they are the energy and and, and it's one of those tough concepts in um in well, most religions and um christianity especially where it's so hard to understand that and like understand the trinity or even understand when when moses was talking to the bush and and, and which was the voice of god and i am i am and it's like it's these yeah things that don't comprehend in our mind it's like the word was god and the word was with god and like on a surface level it's like what does that mean right how right. am i supposed to get something from that but it's just the idea i think that you know, when you're when you're reading the Bible, it's you can just say a prayer and, and you're saying God you're with God, yeah. You're saying God's words, or you can do what we do and walk through Thursday and get into it. Right. All right. He was with God in the beginning. Through all right, he was with God in the beginning. That's one two. It's just it's showing you that it's like in, like I said, inseparable from him. It's it's not they met or one was before the other yes. or, you know. Who what came were, first, chicken or the egg? Right. What came first, the word of God. The word of God. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. Through him, all things were made is another. That's a part. The Catholic mass will we'll, um, we'll go through it one day because, you know, you do just kind of hear it, but you don't realize they're actually pulling from scripture. So, yeah. So it, this is a two parts it might sound like the same thing but through him all things are made you know god created everything right without him nothing was made that has been made and so it's just sort of saying like he 
there are his hand is everywhere his hand is everywhere and also you know when you say there's there's only one there, there, um there's only one god the true like it's saying that it, it's not saying he created everything you know it's saying and even and without him there would be nothing right it's only him right it, it's and i like it because you know so many times and uh, people have crisis of faith when they feel that god is so quiet and silent yeah. And you're asking, you're you're begging him, um, please answer me or give me a sign or something. I'm so alone, and and um, you're not. Everything you see is God, yeah. and the Bible is Him speaking. And you are being blessed, and you are surrounded completely forever. You can't escape Him. Yeah. So you're not alone, and He's not quiet. It's yeah. it's it's not. You might be listening for a certain answer, but you're not alone. In Him was life. And that life was the light of darkness. Or sorry. <laughs> <laughs> In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. So same, same thing. You know, just in him. Through him. Like, uh, it, it's it's sort of like, you know how we say everything's about love. Yeah. And we were created as as vessels of, of love. Right. Because we are just, and it, it was, it was in. He is love, and so everything that was created was just from that, right. from that, that love that he had, is what created all of mankind. Right. It's created vessels for that love. And and the concept of light is so important because yes. even in Revelation, when they talk about you know um, the afterlife, it's all light. It's not coming from the sun. It's not coming from the moon. It is. It is God is light and we will never we will never be in darkness. Yes. And finally, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. And that's just, you know, one one of those things that especially in dark times, talk about the light and the darkness. It's yeah. the light of God's love. Once it created everything, it will never be darkened by anything. Right. It, it's it's to it, the darkness will, will never overcome it and i like um the darkness will never overcome it too like re- if, if you if you felt like it also could refer to evil forces or the devil or you know yeah that even though it's always a fight it's always a temptation it's always a please help me against it it's never going to overcome god yes so exactly. you, you know what you know what team to be on you know what team to be on the right team um but yeah, that's that's that. I think it's a reassurance. I think this is one of those ones that you can choose as a prayer. Yeah. I, I think it, it sort of, especially about the Bible, like it's a reminder of the power right. of the word and God and the connection between the right. two. And I, and I think that's a powerful um, thing to remember. Um, I picked St. Teresa of Avila today. So I just wanted to say a quote of hers. Okay. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things are passing away. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. Whoever has God lacks nothing. God alone suffices. Ain't that the truth? And and I like that. Whoever has God lacks nothing. Um, Yesterday we did the bag podcast. Yes. And there, um, there's a story of Jesus, I think in Luke where Jesus talks to the disciples and he said, I told you to leave everything. Yes. Right. And they said, yeah. And they said, and he said, and, and what are you lacking? And they were like, nothing. Even though they left everything because yeah. that wasn't the stuff. And that's that, guys. That's John 1, 1 to 5. Check it out. Read it. Check out the Bible. You know, it's, the, the word is with him and the word is God. So anyway, we'll be back tomorrow for Fun Friday. Stay safe out there because everyone's hide your, hide your, what's it? Hide your kids, hide your wife. Because <laughs> yeah. Amara Khan is here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Peace.